Hey YouTube, this is Jay Dolan, aka Uplifting Downbeats. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about music library management for DJs and specifically integration between uh, iTunes and Native Instruments Tractor. Um, everything I'm going to show you today will work on either a Mac or a PC and it's also going to work with any style of music that you play. Um, basically my goal is to show you a couple of tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years that make managing uh, your music library as it grows and grows in size uh, more manageable. So to start off with, looking at my iTunes screen, you see on the left hand side here, I have a folder of iTunes smart playlists. You can tell they're smart playlists by the cog icon that they have there. Um, and it's very important that actually all these playlists are organized into the folder called Tractor, and I'll explain why in a second. But basically smart playlists uh, let you define criteria that target all the metadata associated with your music. So all the tags uh, that you put on your tunes when you grab them from Beatport or SoundCloud or whatever, smart playlists give you a way to query that. And the reason why that's important is as your music library grows, handpicking all of your playlists to synchronize things in a tractor just won't scale. So it's instead very important to come up with a, a classification system and then you apply that consistently to all of your tunes and then let the smart playlist do the rest. So what do my smart playlist definitions look like? Well, I play mostly drum and bass and progressive house music, so I'm gonna show you those two as examples. If we look at the criteria definition for drum and bass, you can see the rating is greater than two stars, so in other words, three stars and up, and the genre does not contain the string mixed. Now, the reason why I do that is I have a lot of DJ mixes of, of myself that I've recorded, and many, many more of other DJs that I've downloaded from, from the internet and whatever, and I put the mixed word uh, in all of the genres for those uh, to basically filter them out of this list because I wouldn't want to synchronize those in a tractor, right? You don't want those things tying up, uh, you know, screen real estate in your tractor library. So the genre must not contain mix, but the genre must contain drum and bass. Lastly, I have checked is equal to true. Now the checked column is this check mark right here next to the track numbers. And uh, this doesn't really have uh, an implicit meaning in iTunes itself. There is a preference in iTunes to only sync checked tracks to your phone or other device. Um, I don't even use that feature myself. So basically checked is just another free field that iTunes gives you to classify music. Now, I use the checked column to retire tracks. And then the reason why I do that is the most obvious other way to make tracks fall off of my playlist that I'm syncing with Tractor is to lower their rating, but I don't really like doing that because if I ever wanted to go back and, and put together a throwback set of you know drum and bass music from eight years ago or whatever, uh, it'd be great to have all my ratings still intact. So rather than drop tunes down to a two-star rating as they age and kind of grow out of my library, um, I just uncheck them and that effectively retires them, removes them from these smart playlists. So. That's drum and bass. Let me show you Progressive House. It looks very much the same. Uh, you can see again, the rating is greater than two stars. The genre does not contain mixed. And here's sort of a hidden little gem of iTunes smart playlist functionality. You can see I have like a compound expression on genre here that it's either Progressive House or Progressive Breaks. And the way that you do that is um, this dialogue only gives you these plus and minus signs to add and remove criteria. But if you hold down the Alt key, the plus sign turns into an ellipsis and that lets you um, basically nest or, or uh, group different expressions together to make compound logic out of them. So that's how I was able to do that either or there. So these tunes uh, must have a genre containing either progressive house or progressive breaks. And then just like drum and bass, the checked must also be true. So that's that. I have others here for you know reggae, dubstep, um, even DJ tools, things like acapellas, um, or you know other monologues for movies, things like that that I use over my sets. Um, but they all look basically the same. Now, what's kind of cool is that by putting these all into a folder, when I click the folder, I actually see an aggregate of everything that's uh, comprising all of the playlists beneath this. That's huge. Um, this trick actually works in Tractor too. So when you click on the tractor folder in the tractor uh, user interface, it shows you everything underneath that. That makes syncing and importing new music basically a two-step process, or two-click process, I should say. It's very simple, you don't have to go hunt through your music library in the iTunes bridge in Tractor or anything like that. 
you just click on this playlist, select all, import, done. Now the other key thing about uh, smart playlist here is that checked column, that retired flag. I create another smart playlist that lives outside of the tractor folder. And all this one does has a very simple criteria definition. It just says checked as false. And so by having a smart playlist that seeks out all of my retired tunes, I can use this in the tractor user interface to basically purge things from my tractor library that I don't want taking up screen real estate in there anymore. So, so that's the, that's basically, uh, how I use smart playlists to integrate with tractor. There's a couple more things I want to go over before we hop over to tractor and I'll show you how all this actually works. So next up is the comments field. And, uh, there are two things that I really try to capture two traits that I try to, um, qualify about music as I acquire it. And that is the texture and the energy level. The energy level tells me where in a set that track likely falls. So I only have three energy levels. Um, other music software like record box gives you things like colors to use for this. Um, but I prefer just using the comments field and that way it works in any, uh, any music system that I look at it in. But basically my energy levels are intro, Groover and dance floor. Those are kind of the three big ones. Some tracks might fall a little bit in between. And so maybe I would tag them as both intro and Groover or both Groover and dance floor. Um, but those are the basic energy levels. And again, those tell me where in a set that song would likely fall. And that helps me as I'm kind of going throughout the night, um, you know, for the first half hour, I'm playing intro songs. Um, then I move into Groovers for an hour or something like that. And then dance floor when it's prime time. So that's energy level. Now, the other piece of metadata that I try to capture again is texture. And by texture, I mean like the feel or the general mood or the style, maybe even subgenre of a tune. And so uh, for house music, tracks basically fall into a few different textures for me. Um, liquid and trance for me are the two sort of primary textures of house music. Uh, something that has like a, p a piano or a guitar or something like that would be liquid something that's like more techie vibe, um, certainly something with any like, you know, sci-fi vocal samples or anything like that would be a trance track. Um, I also have other things in the comments field like deep. If something's, you know, like 124 beats per minute or slower, I qualify that as, as deep progressive house. Um, I put other things in here even to tell me a little bit about like how the song hits. It might be a roller or it might be a banger, um, depending on what the bass line is doing. So these are all kind of like texture attributes that I try to capture. Um, if a track has a particularly nice vocal or prominent vocal, I'll, I'll put that in the comments field as well. So this is all just metadata that I use, um, helps me kind of search and it, or sort and make decisions when I'm looking at, you know, the 300 tracks in my tractor list. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what song should go next. Uh, all this metadata helps me do that for drum and bass. It's pretty much the same thing. The energy levels, again, it's energy levels and texture. The energy levels are the same. You've got intro, groover, and dance floor. The textures are a little bit different. And for drum and bass, these more kind of resemble subgenres to me. Um, so I have like liquid funk, jazz funk, tech, neuro, um, things like that. And uh, likewise, if something has a vocal, I'll go ahead and tag that. Um, if something has a kind of continuous rolling bass line, I'll, I'll call it a roller. If it has like a really hard pronounced hit, I'll call it a banger. So that's it. Um, those are, that's the metadata that I, that I classify to everything. Now, what's important about this is every single time I buy new music, I go ahead and classify the tracks like this. I'm buying music, you know, like two to 10 tracks at a time. So to apply this classification, it takes, you know, two to four minutes every time I buy music. It's not, it's not a whole lot of work, but it pays off uh, tremendously when I'm actually trying to either, you know, put a set together on the fly or even when I'm preparing a set, you know, days ahead of time for, for a big gig that I know about in advance. So, so that's how I classify my music. And, and again, the, the point is to let the smart playlists do the work for you. So what's the payoff? What does it look like in Tractor? All right. So let's go into browser mode here, clear off my search. Now we'll walk through importing new tunes, retiring tunes, and then sort of navigating your, uh, your library. So I'm looking at the iTunes bridge inside of tractor here, and I'm looking at my smart playlist folder called tractor. Now, again, everything that appears on any of those playlists is showing up in this folder view, which is great because if I have new songs, if I purchase new music, 
I can just Command-A and import into collection, and that would synchronize everything. Um, I don't have to go hunting through you know, iTunes and sort by date or something like that to try to find the new tracks. They're all right here, I know that. Awesome. Uh, likewise, if I have tunes that I've recently retired through iTunes by unchecking them, I can click on the retired playlist here, and I can either scroll up and down and look for songs that are in white, because uh, the white font indicates that Tractor knows about them and has them in its collection. Uh, or again, I could just right click, uh, you know, Command A and delete from collection. So, so that's how I go about retiring tunes. Um, this eliminates any of that duplicate work that you might do, kind of like hunting and pecking, trying to cherry pick your library to keep things in sync. It's really slick. Now, in terms of that metadata in the comments field and what's, what the payoff is there, let's take a peek. So first thing I do if I show up at a gig or if I'm at home and I'm preparing for a set that I'm playing in a couple days or whatever, uh, I'm going to go into the genre playlist for what I think I'm going to start my set with and say I'm going to start playing Progressive House. I can just come in here and type intro and let it filter this playlist. Now, just a note here, there's a slight bug in the tractor UI. If you hit enter when you're using the search, it'll actually move your search up to the entire track collection. I'll show you. So right now, the the results here on the right-hand side are showing intro within Progressive House. That's because I didn't hit enter. When I hit enter, it jumps up and applies that search across my entire library. It's, I think it's a bug, but at any rate, um, the search results live update, so just get in the habit of not typing enter. So again, I'm in Progressive House. I'll search for intros. Um, I might sort this list by rating to find something I'm particularly keen on. Here's a decent track. Load it up. Now that gives me my jumping off point. I know where I'm at. Um, and based on probably the key, I would decide where I want to go next. So the very next thing I do while this tune is playing um, is I would probably sort this list again by key. And again, I'm looking at intros. Um, you know, I could stay with intro energy level, or if it was if it was time to move into uh, Groover, then I would just modify my search here, my filter, look for Groovers, and it's sorted by key. If I forgot what key that I'm in, I can hop out of browser view, and I've actually edited my preferences in Tractor to have the key visible here, so I can always at a glance tell what key I'm in. I'm in B minor. Go back to browser view. Scroll down to B minor. Look for something that's a groover in B minor or one of the harmonic keys. Um, and that's it. I could you know, preview these in my headphones, grab one that's rated five stars, awesome. Load it up and I'd be good to go. So that's the general idea. Uh, that's what all this classification gives you. It really eliminates any duplicate work that you might be doing currently to keep your tractor and your iTunes in sync. Um, and it makes navigating and, and making the most of the music library that you have very easy. So that's my system. Feel free to adapt it, obviously. Questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. And I refuse to let this go. And I refuse.